Let's start in prayer. Father, we just thank you that as we come together today, we don't grieve as those who have no hope, even though we feel pain and we grieve that if anyone is in Christ, that that person is a new creation and that there needs to be no fear of death. And we can hope again if we've believed in Jesus to be able to see Pat again. So Lord, at the same time, while we're here, um, we're saddened at the loss of someone so suddenly that we loved. So God, I just ask today that you would comfort the family, uh, that you would just be with Doug and with Tony and with Tiffany and their, their whole family, that you'd just give them strength and lift them up during this time, uh, that you would allow them to lean on you and that your special peace would just come through in a special way. And Father, we just commit this service to you today and we just ask that you bless it even in the midst of these strange circumstances with what's going on in our country. We just ask that you would still uh, show yourself to be just as present and just as comforting. And God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We are here today to celebrate the life of Patricia Irvin Ham, 73 years old, who went to be with our Lord and Savior this last Thursday, suddenly, uh, April 2nd. She was born in Iredell County on January 9th, 1947, to Willis Lee and Celeste she was a member of our church, First Baptist Welcome. She was a loving mother, a loving wife, a loving grandmother. Uh, her memory is going to be cherished forever. She leaves here, her husband Doug, two daughters, Tony and Tiffany, a brother, Gary, and four grandchildren, Dustin, Dylan, Zachary, and Carson. It was interesting talking to several of the people in her Sunday school class. Pat taught Sunday school for several years at our church and was well known and well loved because of that. And they wanted me to mention several things about her today. Uh, she was basically a minister in her time of teaching Sunday school from what was said. She prepared very well and one of the running jokes for Pat was, do you want to give an altar call now after her Sunday school lesson was done? Uh, it was just so in-depth and uh, it was just so inspiring that many times people who'd been to Sunday school felt like they'd sort of been completely to church and, and they were good to go after just that interaction with her. She prepared very well and put a lot of work into it. Uh, she um, studied all week long. It was very clear just from what uh, came through uh, that Pat put a lot of work into that. She was an encouraging person. She was a great lady, according to the, the women in her Sunday school class. She was the kind of woman who not only prepar prepared well to teach a large group of women, but she was the kind of woman who made individual impact on women as well. Uh, there were several who mentioned just the blessing that Pat was to them because individually, Pat could understand that they had a need of a special kind of counseling or a special kind of encouragement, and she often gave that. She was someone who could do the best of both worlds, uh, that she could teach a class, but she could also be one-on-one -on -one really effectively. Uh, several mentioned just how vital Pat was to, uh, to each of them just in their personal walks and just in dealing with major things in their life, whether it was depression or just difficult situations, uh, that Pat just was someone who was so kind and so good uh, in the midst of all that. One of the running jokes in Sunday school, uh, Doug, was that when Pat would talk about new recipes that she had done, that often she would give your feedback to however you'd felt. And one of the running jokes was that you would ask her, is this from Facebook? Uh, because anytime there was a new recipe that was getting tried out, sometimes if it didn't uh, go too well, that's what she told everybody. Maybe I can blame Facebook instead. We let her know. <laughs> <laughs> She was uh, very prepared as a teacher. As I mentioned, she gave gifts. One woman mentioned how a devotional book that Pat had enjoyed, she then gave to someone else, and that became a blessing uh, otherwise to them. I loved my interactions with Pat through the years, that she's someone who uh, I got to know fairly early on here, the way that things were working in our church. Sometimes I didn't get to meet some of the older folks in the church because of two services at the same time. Um, if they had not been in our church 20 years or so. And so I got to know Pat a little bit later on. The first conversation I remember, the first conversation I remember having with Pat was uh, around the time of our centennial. Our church had celebrated 100 years as a church, and we were compiling a bunch of photos and things like that to put in. Uh, and, and one of the things that was asked was if there was anyone in the church 
who'd be willing to scan photos, you know, just hard copy photos, and make them to where they could go on the computer. And Pat was willing to do that. She had a good block of time she could devote to that. And, uh, and I remember that what Pat was doing was she was scanning this large stack of photos that people had sent her. And what she didn't realize was that every time she scanned it on her little scanner, it sent an email uh, to me. And so she was scanning and scanning, and I remember coming in one day, and by the time I checked my email, I had over 200 emails from Pat. And I would sit in there, and I was watching the screen, and every five seconds, another email from Pat would come up. And I remember calling her and saying, Pat, Pat, that's enough. We're good. You don't have to do any more. But she was so faithful. Uh, my wife talked about just how much of a blessing Pat was in the nursery. That's where she first met Pat. And uh, just how much she enjoyed talking to Pat through the years, just for the way that Pat was so considerate, she was so encouraging, and she was so quick to speak into what the Lord was doing in her life. I got a chance to have a lot of great conversations with Pat over the last several years. Sometimes they were over the phone, sometimes they were in person, uh, sometimes they were just over Facebook Messenger, especially these last few weeks. She got to where she didn't really want to be having a whole lot of conversation conversations, but when she felt good, she'd send you a note and you could go back and forth a little bit. I know that she had a, uh, a rough bout at times the last few weeks. Even in that, I saw in Pat someone who was so strong and so faithful. It just impressed me so much that through all this, she kept saying, I'm confident the Lord's taking care of me no matter what happens. God's in control. I don't doubt that one bit. Whatever He wants to do, I'm fine with. And she was just so strong uh, in what she was facing and what she was going through. I'd like to read two passages of Scripture today, one from the Gospel of Mark chapter 5, which is really a story within another story. Jesus is approached by a man named Jairus who wants him to come back with him in order to be able to heal somebody at his home. And while they're going that way, there's a woman who comes up to Jesus, and this is what it says, Mark 5, uh, beginning with verse uh, 25. And there was a woman uh, who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grow, grew worse. She would heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I even touch his garment, I'll be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you and yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. I couldn't help but think of Pat in, in thinking of what to, to preach on this morning or this afternoon. I couldn't help but think of this story that a woman comes up to Jesus in the midst of him going somewhere else and she's willing to interrupt Jesus. She's willing to step out in faith and to do something that's not necessarily what everybody else would be doing in this moment. And she believes enough to, in Jesus that she says, you know what, I don't have to speak to him. He doesn't have to know my name. If I can only just touch his garments, I know that's going to be enough. And I feel like knowing Pat that she had that kind of faith. She was willing to reach out in moments perhaps when others wouldn't. She was willing to believe in times when it was really difficult. And I think she had a real belief in not only the truth about who Jesus was, but the power that was available to those who knew Jesus and trusted in Him. She believed that God's will was sovereign, that she couldn't control it and just decide, well, I'm going to be healed. But she also knew whatever God wants to do, I know that He can do it and that He will do it. And she believed very strongly in the power of God in everyday life, not only for herself, but for others around her. I know at our church that's what she appreciated, or she, others appreciated so much as they shared uh, that they, she really talked to people as if she believed Jesus would have impact not only on their eternal life, but on their life here and now. And I think that was a wonderful blessing for so many. Uh, that, uh, that Pat illustrated. She reached out in faith towards Jesus. I know so many times these last few weeks and had to depend on Him when it seemed like everything else was just not working uh, the way that she had hoped and she showed that strength. I know um, you guys in the family talked about how much she loved her family and she loved her faith and she, she loved the Lord and, and those two things shined out above everything else and, uh, and Pat really gave evidence of that. The second passage that I want to read is in John chapter 11, verses 20 through 27.
John 11 is a passage about Jesus' friend Lazarus who dies and Jesus waits four days to go to the tomb because he knows he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And even in allowing that, it's going to be more powerful for everyone to see Lazarus coming back from the dead than it would have been if he had simply healed Lazarus in the beginning. And Jesus, while he's coming into town, is greeted first uh, after they learn that he's there by the oldest sister, Martha, who comes to him. Martha gets a bad rap in Scripture because uh, she, in one instance, is being busy in the kitchen while she should have been listening at Jesus' feet. But there's also a lot of wonderful things we see in Martha. We see a lot of strength that she's the one to come out and she approaches Jesus with a kind of grace that her sister Mary is not going to approach him with. But this is their conversation in John chapter 11. Jesus came and he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem about two miles off and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, excuse me, uh, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of God, who's coming into the world. Martha believed in an abstract theological reality that was going to happen at some distant point. And as she comes out to talk to Jesus, and she says, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus responds to her to say, your brother will rise again. Martha starts off by repeating kind of the Sunday school answer that she's learned. Yes, I know in some distant time and far away, he's going to rise again, but that doesn't really help me right now. And Jesus says, no, you don't understand. I am the resurrection and the life. Any who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And then Jesus poses the important question that he poses to all of us. Do you believe this? You know, the great ha hope for anybody watching this video or, or any of us today that we would that Pat would want us to know is that the defining reality of our life is whether or not we've believed in Jesus in a way that leans on him instead of anything else. That's the great hope that Pat had. As she walked through the things of this world, she wasn't just hoping for a pie in the sky dream that was going to happen someday. She was hoping in what Jesus wanted to do right now in this moment in her life whenever it was. And she realized that the same Jesus that provided eternal hope provides immediate hope for each one of us. The thing she would want for each one of us here today is to, to deal real seriously with the question of do we know Jesus in the way that she did? Do we have that eternal hope, not that we can accomplish on our own, but that Jesus has provided in himself? Anyone, Jesus says, who dies, even though he would die, yet shall he live. Pat knew that hope. She had a great amount of strength just simply walking through things that were very difficult, but doing so as unshakable as anybody I've ever seen. And so as we remember who she was to each one of us, as we commit her body to the ground, we can do so with the reality that though we commit her shell here, her spirit is with the Lord. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the, with the Lord, and I believe very strongly that's where Pat is. She wouldn't come back at this moment. She's rejoicing and finally seeing all of her hopes and dreams realized. Won't you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this dearly departed servant who we loved, and I know for people standing here, they loved as a wife, as a mother, as a grandmother, as a friend. So, Lord, we come to you again in our grief just asking for your aid and your help. And, Lord, we just ask that we could also see in the way that Martha had to see, the way that we believe Pat saw in her life, and uh, the way that Jesus points us to here, that the reality of who he is and his defeat of death and what happens for those who believe in him is not simply a distant, faraway reality, but a reality that points to the great hope each day that we can take hold of, that Jesus Christ is walking with us all along the way, and we go exactly where He's leading, and His plans for us are better than the plans we'd make ourselves. 
And the hope that we realize when we go to be with Him is greater than our wildest dreams. And so, Father, even now we commit this body to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and the clear and ever certain hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We ask that you would comfort the family and continue to be with those who are grieving. We thank you and give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the ways that I usually close graveside services, if we could, is just with the last verse of Amazing Grace. It just says, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Sing along if you'd like to. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's grace than when we first begun.